Good evening and welcome to Keto Confab. It is Wednesday night, March the 1st of 2023. And I am your host, Elizabeth Hansen, along with my husband, Dr. Scott Hansen. And I think we're going to be alone tonight um, uh, because some uh, people have had surgery, others are working, others have gotten home from work late. Uh, so our usual members are not here. Um, so we've been gone for a couple of weeks because we've had illness in the house, uh, influenza, influenza A and keto, and I lost my voice. And it was- I mean, COVID. Oh, COVID, not keto. <laughs> we always have keto in the house. Uh, you've been right? done with the keto, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, we've had keto for about two years and we hope we never recover. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Um, but now we're we're okay and we're doing good. And unfortunately, I have a meowing cat in the background. But hopefully, she'll calm down. Um, I don't hear her, so I think you're okay. Okay, good. Anyway, uh, so um, we have been working through Dr. Boz's workbook. We don't read every page and and do every activity, but um, we've been working through the workbook just to do an overview. Good to begin this year. And um, this week we're going to work on section five. And section five is all about the ins and outs of fasting. Um, <coughs> excuse me. But before we get going about um, section five and fasting, um, I wanted to share a video with you because many individuals who are doing the keto diet will use keto products um, and will use substitute sugars uh, so that they don't spike their blood sugar and increase their insulin resistance. Um, but there was a report this week about erythritol, uh, which many times is in stevia products or in monk fruit products um, that, that there's now research saying that they are linking this to heart attack, stroke, and blood clots. Now, I personally don't use any of these because I found out very early um, that I'm sensitive to anything with stevia in it, so I, I can't do stevia. And then I tried a couple of things that, you know, said that the substitute was erythritol, and that caused all kinds of heart arrhythmias for me. So of course, I'm never gonna to go to erythritol again. Um, so we have a video from YouTube that I'll put the link in uh, below, um, in the description below, but I wanted to let Scott share that from his computer and play it for us. It's just three minutes and a few seconds, and um, then we'll go on with the workbook. So Scott? Okay. Okay, can you see the? Uh... Yes. Okay. Um, the sound, I don't hear the sound. Uh, is, is the sound not high enough? Okay, hold on. Um, I'll try something different. Okay, I got the sound all the way, turned all the way up. Uh, I'll try it again. Okay. Hmm. Does, is the sound okay? No. Uh, okay, this may not work. Um, well, just I put the link below, yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. you could try it to share it from your computer, but yeah, uh, see. that may be the... That may be what's going on. I'm not quite sure. Yeah. Um, let's see if I can share it from my computer. Anyway, it, it's just a three minute and some second um, video. Uh, and Scott, show the screen where the title is and everything. Show that again. Yeah, there it is. Um, so this is uh, Dr. Mondell, 
And um, I've listened to a number of other videos he does. Um, so you can see the title in there. And like I said, I'll put the link in the, in the thing below. Now, I, uh, you can take that off, Scott. <laughs> I have looked at a number of videos about this. And um, one from CBS was really talking about how a keto diet is a fad and they're kind of going, oh, maybe it's a dangerous fad. And um, then I watched one from uh, CNN and they were also talking about how keto is a fad and um, how using these substitutes could be dangerous and everything. But um, I, I felt Dr. Mandel's presentation of this information was more even handed. Um, and that's why I chose this one to share. Uh, he, uh, the, all of it talks about how these uh, sugar substitutes are used by a lot of diabetics, um, which makes uh, you know people who have diabetes are more likely to have a stroke or a heart attack. Um, and these sugar substitutes affect the liver. And our liver is what manages our blood clotting system. So um, it makes sense to me uh, metabolically that a sugar substitute could cause these kind of problems. Um, but it's kind of sad for people who depend on these to help them you know, manage their diabetes or manage their diet, whether they're keto or not. Um, try and keep their weight down or their blood sugars down or whatever. Anyway, I just thought it would be good for you uh, to be aware. Okay, so um, now I'm going to share. Um, I'm going to share. Um, the keto roadmap in Dr. Boz's books. Um, she has uh, the Keto Continuum Roadmap, which I've taken out of my workbook here, but I've got it um, in document form. Tell me when it's shared. It should be coming up. Um, it's not up yet. It's on mine, but... Yeah, I don't, I don't see. Oh, oh there it is. Yeah. Well, there it is. Okay. So Dr. Boz uh, came up with this keto continuum roadmap to try and help people know where they are in the process of keto. So the beginner is these first four, eat every two to four hours, eat every six to eight hours, are less than 20 total carbs. Um, the number three is you accidentally miss a meal. And number four is you eat only two meals a day. Okay, go through. And then um, we get into the second part, which is the baseline metabolic. Now, this is where we start to change the metabolism, where we're working deeper in the body metabolism to try and reverse the insulin resistance uh, or the diabetes if you have it. And um, we start out trying to get to an eating pattern of 16-8. Now, most people, um, when they're able to do 16-8, you can't just jump in to 16-8. Most people, when they're ready to do 16-8, um, are, this is called intermittent fasting. This isn't fasting, this is intermittent. And this is the beginning level of it, where you stop eating around five or six in the evening and you don't eat till noon the next day. Um, so that you've got a long period of time for your liver to start getting all those stored uh, sugar all the stored sugar and glycogen and everything to work out of the body. Um, then uh, she has a level of advanced 16-8, uh, 
where you uh, are cleaning up your morning drink, when you first start eating, and um, you know, you have no fat in the morning, it's just your black coffee or your tea. And then we go to OMAD, and OMAD is one meal a day. It's 23-1, so you go 23 hours without putting anything in the mouth other than water or tea or black coffee. And um, then you eat all in one hour. Then the advanced OMAD, um, you try and move your eating hour to within 11 hours of sunrise. So if sun comes up at eight in the morning, then you try and be done with your eating by six in the evening or is, what is that? 11 hours, okay, four, seven. It would be seven in the evening. Um, that's advanced OMAD. We're still not in fasting yet. We're just challenging the metabolic baseline here. And this is intermittent fasting. We're not into true fasting yet. The next section, which she calls the stressing the metabolism, begins with actual fasting. And actual fasting is where you go 36 hours um, without eating. So you eat and then you have an overnight and a whole day and then till the afternoon of the next day where you're consuming no calories, no sweeteners, and you do, you do two cycles of sleep during this 36 hours. This is true fasting. And then um, some people have a celebratory meal after they complete this 36 hours. I've never done that because it seems to me a little, I don't, I don't know. I just never thought that sounded right to me. Why am I going to gorge myself after fasting for 36? Plus, I thought I'd get sick to my stomach if I did that. Um, but that's fine if you want to do that. And then the next step would be the 36-hour fast without a celebratory meal. And then the next step is 48-hour fast. Um, no calories, no sweeteners, just tea, black coffee, or water, and salt. Um, and then the next step is 72 hours. And you cannot jump right into 72 hours if you've only done OMAD, uh, 23 and one, or even advanced OMAD. You need to work up to it. Um, yes, we want to stress the metabolism, but we don't want <laughs> to totally um, wipe you out and you know cause any kind of problems. So this is her keto continuum roadmap. And in the workbook, she goes into more details about this um, roadmap and everything. So I'm gonna take the share off here and talk more about how she wants to help you get into fasting. Um, so one of the things about fasting is you want to know why you want to fast. Um, well, basically it's because you wanna advance your metabolism um, while living at a baseline metabolism that fits your lifestyle. And you also want to strengthen your ability to say no to food during your baseline metabolism. Um, I find uh, that if I haven't, well, while I was ill, I really wasn't eating much at all. Um, I would have some broth and water, of course, and tea, um, and an occasional scrambled egg. Uh, but other than that, I really wasn't eating. And when I finally started feeling better, I, really didn't have a desire for all sorts of munchies or sweets or anything. I just just wanted to continue drinking my tea and water 
and um, I actually thought broth sounded really good. Um, <laughs> and um, so I think it does strengthen your resolve and your ability to say no uh, to foods um, when you do some fasting. Um, also can um, help with your growth hormone and strengthen your immune system and um, helps your autophagy advance. And, you know, she's talked a lot about autophagy and how it helps with extra skin and um, everything. And, you know, shown pictures of a hundred pound weight loss with autophagy and a hundred pound weight loss without it. And um, I definitely would prefer the with. So then she does have some cautions about fasting. Uh, if you take blood pressure medication, speak to your doctor first. Um, if you take medication to lower your blood sugar, such as insulin or sulfuronate, um, gliburide, uh, and a number of other ones, glipizide, um, you need to talk to your doctor first. Uh, if you take Coumadin, speak to your doctor first. If you've not been at one of the baseline metabolisms for a minimum of two weeks, do not fast yet. And that's what I was saying about watching the continuum and seeing where you are, but you can't jump levels. You've got to go along the levels so that you're not harming yourself or giving yourself a more difficult time. Um, so then um, she talks about drinks uh, what you can drink during a fast, what is good, what is better, what is best. Um, good is bone broth. If you, if you just have to have something in your system, bone broth, the nice gelatinous collagen filled, protein filled bone broth is great uh, and salty. Uh, better is using some ketone in a can, um, you know, substitute or add additional. Um, I don't do well personally. Uh, number one, most of them have stevia in them and I can't tolerate stevia. Even the capsules that don't have stevia cause heart arrhythmias with me. So it's best for me not to do it. A lot of other people can. Black coffee is also better. Um, tea is also a better choice. Um, the best choice is just salt and water. Uh, and just salt and water is called strict fast. So if you want to be the strictest, then um, just salt and water would be your friend. Now she does have a recipe for how to make bone broth on page 145, which is great. Um, I haven't made my own bone broth. Um, just because I guess I'm lazy, uh, but I'm willing to try it at some time. Uh, when you break a fast, she has ideas for that on one page, page 146. Uh, good for breaking a fast is simply eat a normal keto meal. Um, but she does give the warning that any high amounts of carbs, high volume of food or alcohol can cause um, a flush and diarrhea. Uh, and yeah, I would, I would think it would, it probably would happen with me. Um, fast longer, a fast, if it fasts longer than 48 hours turns off the secretion and production that lubricates the lumen of the gut and healthy mu mucus product producing cells store up their secretions normally expelled during a fast. And when you eat, it opens the floodgates to a wave of slimy lubrication for the guts and the end result is diarrhea. Um, so keep it keto and try not to overeat and limit alcohol to one drink. Now, I don't personally drink alcohol, um, but if you do, okay. But let's be real, it isn't the best thing for the liver or for a keto diet. Um, Better than just having a simple keto meal is um, a break of your fast 
with a salty or fermented food 30 minutes before your meal, like kombucha um, or salty bone broth works. Uh, and she says that if she fasts for 72 hours, uh, she loves a cold pickle juice pop cycle, sickle. Um, I'm not sure if I'm in that. <laughs> pickle juice is okay, but I'm not a terrible fan. I'm more of a fan of that than sardines, but okay. Um, then the well, best. A, a pickle juice popsicle would be called a pickle sickle. <laughs> I guess it's called a pickle pickle. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> kind of catchy, um, you know. Kind of catchy, yeah. Then the best thing to do is to use the salty or fermented advice above and just give the gut an hour after having the salty or fermented food. Um, I, I like kimchi, but it's a little too spicy for me. So I, I wonder, does anybody know if they have chimp kimchis that aren't so spicy? Um, and it's not easy for us here in North Dakota to get natto, uh, which are those fermented soybeans. Um, I, I don't mind natto. It's okay. Uh, I've lived in Japan for a while. Scott, do you like natto? Oh, do you yeah, I think so. I think so. Um, I, is it the bean curd stuff? The, yeah, it's, the, it's the beans that bean curd. have those little strings coming off of them and they're a little yeah. sour. No, is sweet. that the sweet stuff or is that? It's not that? sweet. No. Okay, okay, yeah. Um, it's kind of tangy. It's a bit tangy. stinky. Yeah, I think I, I like it. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of stinky, but yeah, I, yeah. I don't mind that. Um, but I do like sauerkraut and I definitely like salt. Lots of salt. Um, so then she she goes on in the workbook to talk about, um, you know, 36 hour fast, 48, 72 hour fast. And then um, on page 149, she talks about the advantages and challenges of each level of fasting. And um, then she talks about some little twists on the fasting, like uh, one in 47, um, one meal every other day kind of fasting and calorie restricted OMAD um, and eight consecutive weeks of keto continuum number 12, uh, 72 hour fast. Um, and then the workbook gets into a lot of pages to help you get through your fasts, a lot of um, worksheets and um, ideas uh, for your 72 hour fast, especially your 12 week, 72 hour fasting um, and finding a rhythm for fasting. Uh, so, you know, uh, it's, it's a lot of stuff there now. Um, in, in, then the next section in the book is some of her compiled resources. Uh, and then that, these all link to, link throughout the book charts. These are, these are different charts that she's had throughout the book, um, both the Keto Continuum book and the workbook. And so, um, we are at the end of the Keto Continuum workbook. And um, I know that there is a group starting uh, this March on Saturday mornings that are going to be reading the workbook page by page and discussing it. So if you're interested in more of that, um, their link is on the Dr. Boz page um, for doing that. And that could be very helpful. Um, to some people, um, but I have done some 36 hour fasts. Um, I usually live um, at OMAD. Uh, so where is OMAD? Um, number seven or number eight. Um, I, I am off my schedule because of being ill and also some other things that um, I'm eating too late at night. 
And I know that, and that's something I need to do. And then once I get back on a good schedule, uh, sleep schedule and eat schedule so that I'm eating, I would like to have my meal at, you know, like 5.30 or 6 each day. Um, but it typically is like 8 or 9 or even 10 um, some nights, which is not good. So if I can get myself back on the schedule, I want to get back to OMAD and then I want to start doing 36 hour fasts once a week. Now, Dr. Boz um, usually would do her Sunday meal after church and then she would fast until Tuesday morning. I, I haven't found a place which is good for me, you know, like um, a time that's good for me. And um, I would like to find a weekly time where I just know that I'm going to fast. I'm not going to eat anything. And that's that. But I haven't found that yet. So um, now, Scott, are you there? Looks like you stepped away. Um, I don't believe Scott has done any fasting. Uh, if you've been following our channel at all, you know that Scott is um, six foot three and weighs about 165 pounds and he's doing keto um for his health he's had uh, not all sorts of health issues um you know like he's had a lot of gas or bad breath body odor and stuff like that and keto has helped with all of that um, but he doesn't need to lose any weight and um so he doesn't follow as strict a keto as me and he doesn't need to um, stress his metabolism as I do. And so he hasn't had to do any fasting. And so anyway, I think that is all that we have for you this evening. I'm sorry we've been gone for two weeks, um, but it's kind of hard to do something like this when you can't talk. <laughs> anyway, I hope you're doing well and hope to see you again. We haven't decided what we're doing starting next week. Um, but we're going to start something else next week. And um, anyway, hope to see you then. I'm going to end the recording now. If I can find the thing to end it.